Now before we get into my post game thoughts from the game that we all watched between the Ravens and the Commanders, uh, I gotta say thank you all because we have officially hit 77,000 subscribers. And that's crazy to me, man. That's crazy. When I was looking at it, I said, whoa, that's, whoa. Um, and y'all are just great people Y'all, I appreciate y'all supporting the channel uh, Whether you're new here, whether you're old here um, Thank you, because that that means a whole lot to me uh, Y'all make this channel what it is Y'all make it super, super, super fun We have a great time on here And I appreciate y'all just helping us grow It's been slow growth, but slow growth is better than no growth And I, I seriously appreciate y'all for allowing us to do this Especially do this as a job Cause that's a it's a privilege, man. It's a privilege. It's an honor, and I I, I love y'all for that. So thank you, thank you for continuing to subscribe to the channel. Keep subscribing. Thank you for continuing to leave a like on the video. Keep leaving a like on the video, and thank you for having your notifications on. Because everything that you do, every single comment, uh, every single like, when you share the videos, when you subscribe, everything helps out a lot. But those of y'all that been getting the merch, so thank you for that. Uh, just thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, the way that y'all been doing it because y'all been helping me, my family a, a lot. And, and just, I, I really, really love y'all so much. You, you just don't even realize, man. Now, on to the battle of the Beltway between the Baltimore Ravens and the Washington Commanders. This game, uh, it got talked up a lot uh, heading into this game that it was going to possibly be the game of the year. And it was a really, really good game. I wouldn't say game of the year, but it was a good game. And there was so much talk about both quarterbacks going up against each other. Lamar Jackson versus Jaden Daniels. And, of course, we all know that the quarterbacks don't actually go against each other. But it's always more fun to say it that way. Um, but both quarterbacks, they came through. Both quarterbacks made plenty of plays. Both quarterbacks, they played excellent games. Um, so shout out to both of them. Both of them are still Headed in that same trajectory that they've been going in. Lamar Jackson looking like right now, hey, he could possibly get a third MVP. He could. And it's funny because when we talked to Lamar Jackson's first, his, his very first QB coach, when we did that interview with him, Coach Van, he talked about it. He, he, he talked about like he, he could see Lamar Jackson getting another MVP this year. And when I heard that, I said, huh. Well, probably right. And now we've been seeing the games. It's like, oh, yeah, you probably right. You do know Lamar like that. So it, it's just been really, really nice to see Lamar just continue to do his thing. And to Jaden Daniels, all the respect in the world uh, to Jaden Daniels because he came in and I really feel like there was more pressure on the Baltimore Ravens to win this game. And not, no, not, not, not necessarily, ah, I can't even talk, not necessarily the Washington Commanders because, one, they were sitting at 4-1. and one, So if they would have lost, okay, they go to 4-2. and two, But nobody was really expecting this out of them. This season that they're having right now, who was expecting them to be 4-1 and one going into this game? I don't know anybody that was expecting that. And, and if you would have told any Washington Commanders fan that, I'm sure they would have been like, oh, yeah, let's go. So they've been having a good season over there. And I remember just looking at the previous teams that they played before the Ravens. I was thinking, hmm, they ain't really played too much of anybody like that. So this Ravens team is going to be the best team that they go up against. And they came through. I, I thought it was going to be a 31-17 game, and boy, was I wrong. So shout out to the Commanders for really making it a game. It ended up being 30-23. to uh, And the Ravens, they end up taking it. Lamar Jackson, starting off with the Baltimore Ravens offense. Lamar Jackson, he had a pretty good game, uh, and he did make some mistakes, but overall, he had a really good game. The offense, they started off a bit slow, but what was crazy about them is, like, they, they didn't necessarily start off slow. I take that back. Scoring-wise, they started off slow, but the offense itself didn't start off slow because they were moving the ball. They kept moving the ball downfield, moving the ball downfield, and then... There was the interception. Lamar Jackson threw a pass to Mark Andrews. It hit Mark Andrews in the hands. Was not the best pass, but certainly wasn't the worst. It was a lot more. Uh, that fault goes to Mark Andrews a lot more than it does Lamar Jackson. Mark Andrews dropped it, but he didn't only drop it. He, he Instead of dropping it down, he dropped it up. And the ball went up in the air. Washington Commanders defender picked it off. It's like, oh, man, come on now. And what's, when you think about that, just to pause for a second. You think about Lamar Jackson this season with throwing the ball, just how he's been taking care of the ball. He didn't fumble this game, so hey, shout out to him. Uh, but he's been taking, a, taking good care of the ball through the air because his only interceptions this season have been – he only threw two interceptions, but um, both of those interceptions were passes that literally hit the wide receivers right in the hands. 
and the receivers just dropped them, and the defender on the opposing team just made a nice play. So it's been unfortunate. It's been unfortunate, but that's it's part of the game. Uh, and we talked about it during the stream. We said we know Mark Andrews. He's going to make up for it, and he certainly did later on. But back to Lamar Jackson. He's just – in this game, he was just dicing the commanders up. He was, um, he was having his way with them for the, for the most part. Now, back to the beginning of the game, um, the second drive. So the first drive was an interception. The second drive, uh, it was that fumble by Tyler Linderbaum where he tried to snap it, but he, it was a miscue and whatnot. But um, they did recover, so that was good. Ravens ended up getting a field goal. Shout out to Justin Tucker because Justin Tucker is back all the way. We trust him again. So I'm glad that we don't got to have any more conversations, at least for now, about Justin Tucker. So that's a good thing. He's, he's officially back. Made three field goals today. Uh, a bunch of touchbacks and whatnot, so we're glad to see Justin Tucker getting back to form. But back to Lamar Jackson, got to give a big shout-out to the offensive line. Got to. Pass blocking, run blocking. The offensive line in this game was amazing. Now, I think it's important that if you're going to get on somebody for their mistakes, you got to give it to them when they get it right. John Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah, John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh at the beginning of this year talked about with the offensive line, how they were struggling, and he it didn't feel like he was playing the best five. So some time passed along and whatnot, and then Andrew Voorhees, he ended up getting hurt. So Pat McCarry, he ended up on the left guard, and Roger Rosengard ended up being a starter at right tackle. So that offensive line, they had been doing a lot better, especially from them first two weeks. Now, they still had their hiccups here and there, but things had improved a lot, not only with the offensive line, but also with the play calling to help the offensive line. But with, I, was one, I was worried because I was thinking, man, when Andrew Voorhees gets healthy, and we want him to get healthy, and he's got healthy now, which is great, but when he gets healthy, are they going to thrust him back into the starting lineup? I was somebody that said, do not fix something that's not broken. It's working right now. Y'all are having a lot of success right now. Look at Derrick Henry's numbers, how he's been running that football. Yeah, if the offensive line wasn't working, then his numbers would not look like that. What did John Harbaugh do? He kept the offensive line intact. He did not say he didn't. He wasn't like, all right, Andrew Voorhees, since you were originally the starter and you're healthy, now, you're going back. No. He said, we're going to go with Pat McCarry. We're going to leave everything as is. And that's that. And, and it's been very commendable for John Harbaugh to do that. I, I've been very happy to see that. Another thing with John Harbaugh in this game, well, you got to give him his credit, too. There was a play. Um, in late in the game, it was in the second half, where the commanders, they were driving, and they were trying to get back in the game. Uh, the Ravens stopped them on first down. They stopped them on second down, right on the goal line. So the commanders were like on a two-yard line, something like that. Oh, then they got the penalty. That backed them up like five yards. So they, like, they were like on a six or seven-yard line. So it was third, third or fourth down. I think it was third down. But Darius Washington looked confused. Him and Marcus Williams, they were confused on what to do. So all Darius Washington was talking to Marcus Williams. They started switching spots and whatnot. And Harbaugh, he called timeout. And that was such – now, it didn't work in the long run because the commander still ended up getting a touchdown, but it was a really good timeout because had he not called that timeout and the Ravens still gave up a touchdown and, and all Darius Washington and Marcus Williams were sitting there looking confused, so many people, we, we would have complained. Like, man, why would he not call a timeout in that situation? Why would he not get the defense right? That's the reason they gave up the touchdown because the defense was confused. But he called the timeout. He made the proper move. Um, so shout out to him for that. Uh, so because again, like I said, if, if somebody gets some stuff wrong, y'all know we, we'll call it out. But if they get get it right, you got to give them their credit. Um, this game overall was a pretty good coached game. Uh, we we're still talking about the offense. Uh, there was a brief moment because early in the game they were feeding Derrick Henry for the most part. There was a brief moment in time where they forgot about Derrick Henry in the red zone, too. They ran a sweep, uh, the jet sweep was Zay Flowers. Then Lamar, I think he got sacked. He tried to run and he got sacked. And then the third down play, I forgot what it was. I think it might have been an incompletion, something like that. But they like completely forgot about Derrick Henry on that drive. They right in red zone. But after that, they didn't forget about him anymore. They did not forget about him any more and Derrick Henry ran to the tune of 24 carries for 132 yards <laughs> average five and a half yards per carry and had two touchdowns now with Derrick Henry's carries 
Remember when I said that John Harbaugh was a troll? When I said he was trolling? Remember weeks ago, John Harbaugh was like, we did not bring in Derrick Henry to get 30 carries a game. We didn't bring him in here for that. I said, don't listen to it because he's just trolling. And they have been feeding Derrick Henry a lot. Every game after that, Derrick Henry has been getting fed. They have not been neglecting Derrick Henry for the most part. They got their moments, but for the most part, they haven't been. Todd Monken in this game, for the most part, he had a pretty good game. Situationally, for the most part, he had a pretty good game. There were some moments where what the Baltimore Ravens were doing was predictable. Um, I remember there was especially one moment, I think it was in the second half, where Derrick Henry, this was a game where when Derrick Henry was on the field, you knew it was a run. When he was off the field, you knew it was a pass. And for the past couple of games, they've been getting they've been getting a lot better with that. But in this game, it felt like they sort of went back. But I mean, hey, it worked. He had 125 rushing yards, two touchdowns, so it couldn't have been that bad. Um, but this game definitely had its tails because the Washington Commanders they will they will be all over stuff. Like when Derrick Henry was not on the field, they were like, oh no, we are gonna focus right on Lamar Jackson. They tried to do that RPO. Lamar tried to do an RPO with Justice Hill. Commander said, no. What what do you think you're doing? You you think you're going anywhere? No, 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 sir. But there, with Lamar Jackson in this game, when he was running, there was a little bit of time where he was a bit hesitant. Just a bit. Just a bit. Um, but then that one run where he just took off, I think it was on a third and short, where he they snapped the ball and just took off. I think Justice Hill was a, a blocker for him. Um, he made just uh, it's a beautiful run, and it was the right decision. But anyway, back to Lamar uh, passing the ball. Um, just his, his numbers, 20 for 26, 323 yards. Uh, one touchdown, one interception. With Lamar passing the ball this game, he it, it was beautiful because the offensive line. The offensive line, for the most part, they gave him protection, and Lamar would just be back there chilling. He said, oh, I'm going to throw it to him. Okay, then let me throw it to him. Oh, I'm going to throw it to him. Okay, let me throw it to him. Throwing it all over the field, throwing it deep, throwing it short, doing it all, doing it all. And he just making it look easy. Why? Because the offensive line was allowing him. To make stuff look easy So again, big shout out to Lamar Jackson uh, Big shout out to the offensive line Zay Flowers Now Zay Flowers had a big first half Second, second half got a little quiet But he, he was Biggest game of his career Thus far Zay Flowers had 9 catches for 132 yards Wow, that's a lot Got most of that in the first half, I think. Did he get all of it in the first? I think he got all of it in the first half. But if he didn't, he got like 99% of it in the first half. So Zay Flowers could not be touched. But what happened? Was it more of the commanders made adjustments to keeping the ball away from Zay Flowers in the second half? Or was it that the Ravens just got away from him? Hey, who knows? But Rashad Bateman, I love what Rashad Bateman has been doing. Uh, Rashad Bateman has really been coming into his own and has been a healthy, solid contributor for the Baltimore Ravens at the wide receiver position. Rashad Bateman had four catches for 71 yards, uh, and his longest catch was 23. Had four catches, also had four targets. Say Flowers had nine catches, also had nine targets. So Lamar to those wide receivers, his top two wide receivers, every single target was a completion. Every single one. And these were not all layup passes. These were not all like gimme passes where it's like, oh, he's wide open. No, 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 no. There was some tough stuff in there. So that is a beautiful thing. All right, we'll talk about Rashad Bateman later on this week. Um, but Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, who have been pretty quiet so far this season. Except last game, last week in the fourth quarter, Mark Andrews, he showed up, came through in a clutch. Mark Andrews, after that drop, he said, hold up. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm straight. And you know what Mark Andrews, like – with him, if he has a drop in a game, normally he'll, he'll make up for it because he'll get plenty of opportunities. Now, in this game, he did not get so many opportunities, but he got enough. And I believe he had four targets and had three catches because one of them was that drop. Let me just double check the targets right now. Mark Andrews had three. Yeah, he had four targets. And three out of those four targets were catches. Should have been four out of four, but it happens. Mistakes happens. It is what it is. Not the biggest deal in the world. And it didn't cost the Baltimore Ravens the game. So you move on. You move on. So Mark Andrews, when he went up and get, got that touchdown, I said, oh, yeah, he's back. And it's nice because our tight ends, like somebody in the, in the stream said, do we have this the best tight, tight end room ever? I said, hold on now. Let's, let's pause on that. But 
They do have a really good tight end room. You got Mark Andrews, who's already been there, done that, proven himself. You got Isaiah Likely, who started last year. He's shown like, hey, I could be tight end one, and he should be tight end one for the Ravens. Then you got Charlie Kohler, too, who this has been the year where, in my opinion, he's been the most impactful and been the most involved, too. So Charlie Cole has been doing his thing. I've been loving what we've been seeing from him. All three tight ends can catch. All three tight ends be blocking their behinds off too. They get it in so many different ways, and that's super, super important that you can do that and you can contribute in all those different ways. Um, Isaiah Likely had a two catches for 27 yards. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, one catch for 25 yards. Uh, and Justice Hill, one catch for two yards. Uh, Nelson Aguilar on his catch, he got upfield, man. He got he got up field. We could have got a little bit more, but hey, it, it was cool, man. He got up field. Nelson Aguilar has been extremely efficient. He's been extremely efficient when he catches the ball. Like he may not get many catches, but when he get a catch, like he gonna get you a nice little chunk of yards. Like a couple weeks ago when he got that what that forty nine yard catch, however long it was, I forgot how long it was, but that's Nelson Aguilar for you. Um, speaking about efficiency, uh, we we talked about Derrick Henry's numbers earlier. Um, but Derrick Henry, when he runs, I, I, I love his run style because he is extremely efficient. He does not run for, he does not take losses very often. Um, Derrick Henry, I, I love, even when it's not much there, he makes sure that he makes the most out of every single play. Even if it ends up just being a one or two yard gain, if it ain't nothing, he'll just run right into the defenders, run behind his offensive line, run, run behind Pat Ricard. Shout out to Pat Ricard too, by the way. Can't forget about him. But he will make the most of every single play. Every single one. So Derrick Henry has been just an amazing get for the Baltimore Ravens. Like I um I didn't even I didn't know that it was gonna be like this good for him being on the Ravens. Like we knew they were a top running team. We know Derrick Henry, he's like that. He's a bit, but I ain't I ain't know it was going to be this not even good, this great. The fit has been amazing. So Derrick Henry been doing his thing. Um now back to the Ravens on defense. Flip sides. Defense, same thing that's been, been happening. They start off strong, then second half, it just, it's like what happens? They they just collapse. Um, the defense in this game against Jaden Daniels, like look, looking at his numbers, he got, he was 24 out of 35, 269 yards, uh, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Did get sacked three times. So that was nice to see. And the guys who got those sacks, Travis Jones, he got one. Michael Pierce and Matabike got a half a sack. And then Yannick and Gakwe. They're going to have to put that boy on the active roster soon, man. Somebody going to look at that tape. They're going to say, oh, Yannick and Gakwe, he still got it? And he was a free agent out here all this time? And we, we need more help pass. Ravens, you, hey, I, I know y'all like playing games with the roster and stuff like that, but you're going to have to put that boy on the active roster very, very soon. So we'll see. Um. But, yeah, the, the Ravens in this game, um, number one rushing team, uh, number one run defense uh, in this game, it was a lot of the same. The Commanders ran the ball 18 times for 52 yards, averaged 2.9 yards per carry. One of the things I was concerned about heading into this game, um, Brian Robinson Jr. was out, but I was still concerned about their running game, but more so, mostly Jaden Daniels on the ground. I wasn't really worried about the commander's running backs, but I was worried about Jaden Daniels taking off because that's a big problem. They held him to six carries for 22 yards. His longest carry was nine yards. Longest carry was nine yards. So that's an amazing win for the Baltimore Ravens in itself. Um, now, I wish they would have <laughs> held Scary Terry uh, to a lot less. Not even yards. Cause he didn't get a bunch of yards. Well, he got a good chunk of yards. He got 53 yards, but it was them touchdown catches. The touchdown catches. Defender was right there, but scary Terry. Terry McLaurin just made a play. The one on Marcus Williams where he just beat. I forgot who the corner was that was covering him, but he hit that slant and just beat him from jump. And then the one he caught on Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens was draped all over him, but Jaden Daniels put the ball in the perfect spot. Terry McLaurin made the perfect catch. Because, again, Brandon Stevens, the coverage does not get much better than that. To where Brandon Stevens, and it's the same thing, it happens every week. Brandon Stevens will be draped all over receiver, not giving much room to the football or on the receiver, but he just won't make the play a lot of time. Now, he did make a play early in the game where he ain't even get turned around, but he just ended up being in between the ball and the receiver, so he forced it in completion. Uh, so that was good. But with Brandon Stevens, it's, it's tricky, man. It's been very, very tricky. Marlon Humphrey this game, it's pretty quiet. Had a pretty quiet game. Uh, Nate Wiggins, 
Nate Wiggins, he had some plays that, that he made that were nice. Then he had that um, the pass interference on the fourth down where Jaden Daniels put it up. And Nate Wiggins, boy, on number 85. Number 85 was making some plays for the commanders. But Nate Wiggins was grabbing him, holding him, tugging him at the jerk. It was so much pass interference on that play. It was a good call. In this game overall, I feel like the Ravens, they, the refs were on their side for this game. Like much more than they were on the commander's side. Ravens did get, for a few calls, they got some home cooking. They, they, they really did. <laughs> I, was like, I said, whoa, I'm not, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to it. But um, that, that wasn't what gave the Ravens the win. But yeah, they had some favorable calls uh, on their side. Um, now back to the defense. Oh, my goodness, Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith in this game, it was the best play that he's made all year. Jaden Daniels was looking for somebody downfield. Nobody came open. Jaden Daniels started scrambling. Roquan was coming at him full speed. Jaden Daniels, he tried to shake him. Roquan didn't go for it. And Roquan forced him out of bounds. It was such an amazing play from Roquan Smith because obviously one-on-one, Jaden Daniels versus Roquan Smith. Oh, Jaden Daniels got that all day, every day. Not head up or nothing like that, but open field. Oh, yeah. But Roquan won. And I, I said, whoa, that was amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Um, I, I also love how adjustments were made. They tried to switch some stuff up. You know, Eddie Jackson, he's been struggling a bit. So what did they do? They put Ardarius Washington as safety. And on Eddie Jackson's side, I said, oh, I like this. He almost caught a pick. He dropped it. Jaden Daniels threw it right to him. Oh, he threw it right to him. But he, he dropped it. So, but I, I was just so happy to see that. Like, hey, this is good. It's good to acknowledge when you make mistakes. Uh, if, 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 if not even necessarily make a mistake. But if there's a struggle, it's nice to acknowledge it and address it and handle it and try to fix it. And that's exactly what they did by having Ardarius Washington come in at safety a lot for Eddie Jackson in this game. So that was just really, 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 really nice to see. I, I absolutely love that. Kyle Hamilton. Oh, man, he was all over. He did a good amount of blitzing. He, of course, playing coverage and whatnot. Um, he's such an amazing player. Made a big hit on Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin is a beast. Obviously, we knew that already. But that man, is he's real deal. Uh, he took a nasty hit from Kyle Hamilton. Not a dirty hit. Just a nasty hit, though. Filthy one. Filthy in a good way, though. Uh, the refs initially threw the flag. They, they called it a, um, I think they would call it a helmet to helmet or defenseless receiver. But then they looked at it and said, hold up. That, no, that wasn't no flag. Let's pick it up. I said, okay, good no call by the refs. Um, but yeah, the defense, they, they still got to get better. They, they got to get better. Thank goodness the offense has been coming through like they have been. And something to think about, the Ravens in this game, they scored 30 points. Baltimore Ravens offense scored 30 points in this game. Um, they, they left points out, of, out there on the field. And it, you got to give respect to the commanders because they helped the Ravens leave those points on the field because they made the plays to stop them. But Ravens offense wasn't even clicking all the way, and they still left points on the field. It's beautiful to see. Also, um, I love how the Baltimore Ravens, they closed it. They, didn't, they weren't like, oh, you know what, we're going to let the defense close it out. No, the Ravens offense closed it out, uh, and they, they needed to. Ooh, it was 30 to 23 when Commanders got that field goal. And shout out to Ben Cleveland for blocking one of the field goals earlier. But um, when the Commanders got that field goal, they made it 23 to 30 or 30 to 23. It's like, ooh, all right, Ravens, let's offense, let's close it out. But then I was thinking, like, man, if Ravens offense doesn't close it out and Commanders get a shot, and if they get a touchdown, I already knew they were going for two. I knew they weren't going to go for no, no tie. They were going to go for the win. Especially, again, you got – not that you don't got nothing to lose, but it's just so much less pressure. Like, again, if you win, you, you go 5-1. and one. If you lose, oh, you're 4-2. But this is a loss to an AFC opponent. Well, every loss of obviously does count, but this would be a loss to an AFC opponent. wouldn't hurt as much as a loss to an NFC opponent. They would be straight. They'd be fine. And they'll still be fine. But you know what I'm saying? I just thought they would have went for two. But I'm glad that we didn't even have to have that conversation because the Ravens offense closed it out. And, again, that's what you brought Derrick Henry in here for. You brought him to be a closer. You brought him to finish games for you. And that's exactly what he's been doing. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. Again, thank you very, very much for 77,000 subscribers. Thank you all who come through on the live streams. Thank you all for just supporting this channel. I love you. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. If ain't nobody tell you that today, I'm telling you. I love you, and I got a lot of appreciation for everything 
that y'all do um, just with helping us out a lot. We're just coming through and showing support to the channel a lot. So thank you for being you. Uh, thank you for watching our post game thoughts uh, for this game between the Baltimore Ravens and the Washington Commanders. And until next time, I see you when I see you.